Astros back home here in Houston, Texas. It's game six of the American League Championship Series. With the Yankees up three games to two. And now welcome inside the broadcast booth everybody. I'm Joe Buck along with the Hall of Famer John Smoltz. We get set for game number six. Cannot wait for this rematch from what we saw in game two. Let's talk about how things have changed since we walked out of this booth last Saturday. The Astros were up two games to nothing. Nobody was worried about their offense. Now people are because the Yankee pitching was outstanding in New York. And John, they have to get the top two spots of this lineup going in front of Altuve and Correa. Well, there's no mistake. There's pressure on everybody, but the pressure is on the Houston offense. That's what made them special this year, but what has gone dormant has put him in this position. I think the top of the lineup, like you said, as well as left handed hitters, somebody's got to come up with a huge hit and it'll fire up the entire lineup and get him going. All right, in game two, Luis Severino gets the ball tonight for the Yankees, was very good. He went four innings and Joe Girardi took him out. The other guy, Justin Verlander, was brilliant. Nine innings, shut down baseball. You personally have been in a situation like Verlander tonight. How did you approach it? How should Justin Verlander approach it to get the best of what he's got? Well, fortunately, he's had many experiences like this. You just fight the feeling that you have to be better. You don't have to be better. You have to command the game from the beginning and know that your ability is better than the lineup you're facing. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to control the atmosphere and the emotion and give your team the best feeling that he's on the mound. We're going to win. They made the big trade to get Justin Verlander to the Houston Astros. He said simply, this is why I'm here. Can't wait to watch this rematch from game two. It's game six tonight in Houston. 30 seconds and count. For Houston, the mission is simple, a World Series title. After initial liftoff, the Astros' playoff hopes have fallen back to Earth. On the brink of elimination, Houston, we have a problem. Now the only man that can save them is the player they brought here just for this situation. Can Justin Verlander propel the Astros to a Game 7? Or will the dreams of the fall classic be extinguished? It's Game 6 of the ALCS.
talk offense and let's look back. The Houston Astros, the number one offense during the regular season. As a team, they hit 282. They were the number one run producing team. They have produced only nine runs in the five games played in this ALCS. And that has got to change for Houston if they are to advance. You see the numbers this series, their average, what they've done with two outs, what they've done with runners in scoring position. And the same with Risp and two out, man. It has been a dried up offense, but we'll see what happens tonight. Let's send you down to Tom Bernucci. Thank you, Joe. Well, Justin Verlander threw a career high 39 sliders in game two, all to the same side of the plate. Now, with the help of technology, that has become a weapon. The Astros use a high speed camera to film bullpen sessions. His old team, the Tigers, didn't have one. He noticed a flaw where his elbow was dropping slightly. Now, he's fixed that, as you can see, has tremendous tilt on that pitch. How many sliders tonight? Well, keep this in mind. In game two, Verlander showed the Yankees only two change-ups. And pitching coach Brent Strom told me, don't be surprised if he mixes in a few more to lefties in key spots. Now, how will the Yankees approach Verlander? Here's Ken Rosenthal. Tom, the Yankees actually have two things in their favor against Verlander. The probability that he won't be as sharp as he was in game two, and the knowledge they gained from seeing him that night. Verlander is a guy who can be really tough, and the Yankees know that, but here they are on the verge of winning or going to the World Series. Alan Cockrell, their hitting coach, told me the plan is pretty much the same as it was against Dallas Keuchel. Be ready to hit. Running up Verlander's pitch count is not necessarily the goal. The Yankees expect him to be out there a long time. Yeah, Kenny and Tom, we know this. He's not scared. He loves this kind of an opportunity. And here's the lineup for the Yankees, and we'll give you what they did against Verlander in game two. Gardner had a hit. Gregorius had a hit. Castro had one. Hicks, Frazier. That's it. Completely shut down the New York offense. And we'll see what he has in store for the Yankees here tonight. And then when the sides shift, what Luis Severino has in store for Houston. Glad you're with us tonight on FS1. Should be a lot of fun. Yankees win tonight. They go to their first World Series since they won it all in 2009. The Astros win tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night for Game 7 on FS1. See the three and one record in four career games with his team facing elimination. Here's Brett Gardner first up. Well, there you go first pitch hack and strike one. Yeah eight foul balls last time he was facing Verlander and I would think the Yankees team is going to be a little bit more selectively aggressive they love work in the count and the biggest challenge for Houston is going to be don't su be surprised if your ace gives up a run don't be swayed by the emotion of trailing in a game like this play your game. Verlander has always had the ability to drive that fastball in their mid 90s then when he needs more even late in a game he can touch upper 90s 1 1 pitch that's a base hit Gardner is on to start the night for the Yankees just his third hit of this ALCS How about the defense for Houston out and left it's Marwin Gonzalez George Springer in center and Josh Reddick in right around the infield third to first it's Bregman Correa Altuve Gurriel Brian McCann is catching the 34 year old right hander Justin Verlander and this is what I'm talking about these are the moments of a team that's got momentum coming in here with the Yankees and a team in the Astros that wants to reverse that here's judge. So first pitch swinging strike one judge a big part of why the Yankees swept the three games at home you see what he's done the last three times he's been up with at least one on base 
previous matchup, he started Judge with a fastball every time. That is just blistering in there at 96. Justin likes his fastball, must attack with the fastball, and put the hitters on notice. Left side, Correa, Altuve, got them both. That nifty play from Correa. Judge is seeing it good, squared it up. Correa knows if he gets it to Altuve in time, they get a double play, a big moment in the first inning for Justin Verlander. You saw his emotion. It's a huge game. You got to try to keep that in check as much as you can. Justin will have to pitch deep into the game and make a lot of tough decisions. But two for the price of one is easing your mind. With two out, nobody on. Here's D.D. Gregorius. Yankees on the road this postseason one and four but that one win was in game five in Cleveland to advance to the LCS and Gregorius had two home runs that night. It's just easy gas with the long arms of Verlander and a classic delivery when the ball jumps like that out of his hands even if it's in the middle the hitters are like whoa that's on me. He didn't throw as many curveballs and as you mentioned Joe earlier and Tom with the change ups that'll come into play but right now he's feeling good with the fastball. That one fouled back by Gregorius it's one and two. Seven from Verlander to foul back. In these tight games, of course, there's not much room for error, and you're always amped up. Getting quick outs, quick innings, sitting in between the innings, and letting that energy be a complete relax. Save as much as you can when you get out of the mound. Straight up. Bregman. Faces three in the first.
Houston Astros have the typical look to their lineup. A.J. Hinge said, I keep telling these guys, don't panic. Don't look desperate. So he said, I'm going with what I got. And that means Springer, Reddick, and Altuve at the top. Correa, Gurriel, and Bregman in the middle. Gonzalez and Gaddis, the DH, not Beltran, and Brian McCann. Against Luis Severino, the 23-year-old who's been outstanding on the road since the All-Star break. Yeah, this guy's an absolute stud. Where do you go for success? Well, fastball against right-handers, 225. Change-up, 182. Slider, 184. Tough sledding for the right-handers if this guy's got his sliders and secondary pitches on. Look, I, I think that Joe Girardi was being very cautious with Severino. His pitch one misses inside to Springer. So while that graphic said shoulder injury, and yes, he did the windmill motion with the shoulder in the fourth inning and got hit by a batted ball by Gurriel. He said after the game, I am fine. He had a great bullpen session. Joe Girardi said he is fine. We're not worried about him at all. So there's no injury. Well, he'll be tested in this scenario at ho on the road. But if the if the Houston Astros keep taking big swings, then that is a perfect remedy for Severino. 2-0, sitting there trying to hit it to the train. Severino's fastball, you'll be swinging under it a lot. Little chopper left side. Frazier flashes in front of it. Go Gregorius one away. You know the defense over on the left side of the infield. How about left field? It's Brett Gardner. Aaron Hicks in center. Aaron Judge in right. Around the infield it's Todd Frazier. D.D. Gregorius. Starlin Castro and Greg Bird. The catcher is Sanchez. And on the mound is Severino who took care of Springer after falling behind 2-0. Combination of Reddick and Springer as Reddick stands in. Two for 36 in this ALCS. So, at what point, John, do you stop looking at the Houston hitters? And Reddick is ticked off that that was a strike and not ball one high, and start crediting the Yankee pitchers, oh, especially absolutely. these starters, with the job they've done. Game plan execution on a scale of 1 to 10 is going to be a 9.5. That's how good they've been. There hasn't been a lot of mistakes. And when there is mistakes, the hitters have been in a funk with expanding the zone or not liking a certain call. But for, for me, if Severino, you know, that first pitch, probably a ball high. If he stays underneath his fastball, not a good sign. If he goes downhill with that fastball. Just golfed into left center field. Gardner is over to get it. Two out. Everything's going to be good for the Yankees. And, and he knows it. Look, he knows he's got five. If he can go through five and let Joe do the work in the bullpen, that'll be a great start. He's also extended himself on a season where he was in the pen last year and really didn't experience this long season. So that's part of Joe's concern when he watches his young star extend himself late in the season. The batter is Altuve. Now 205 and a third innings in the books for Severino. As Altuve, the league's best hitter, three over the last four years, fouls it away strike one. See Altuve, when he's going good, he does not miss that pitch. That's a slider middle, 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 and he fouled it off. Five out of 18 in this ALCS, and Severino has Altuve set up at 0 2. But just to say again, what you were alluding to, previous high as far as innings pitched under 162. He's over 205 right now, so that's one of the reasons why yes. they're very cautious with this 23 year old arm. But when he's on, he can be dominant. Ball one. That's it right there. That was a great take. But that's the wipeout slider. Today's style of pitching. This man throws 198, and it's a show pitch because that's the pitch, along with his changeup, that he likes to go to. Gregorius. A perfect first inning. As Severino tries to match Verlander again.
This time in game six after one no score. The ALCS on FS1 is presented by Camping World, America's number one RV retailer since 1966. And is sponsored by Steal a Base, Steal a Taco, only a Taco Bell. And by T-Mobile, this postseason there's a new leader in network. T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Yankees got a leadoff hit from Brett Gardner. Double play ball followed off the bat of Aaron Judge. First up, Sanchez. Strike one. Gary Sanchez, three hits, one of them a home run. That came in the seventh inning, Wednesday in game five. He pitched him so tough last game. He got to strike one and strike two real quick. And that's the key for Verlander because most power pitchers, when they get to two strikes, that quickly they have two luxury pitches to wipe you out with a strikeout. Two strikes after Sanchez it's Greg Bird who you have identified John as the most consistent bat in this lineup for the Yankees and not just swinging the bat but standing there with a the bat on his shoulder. Yeah he's the guy I circle at the scorecard going he's the toughest out right now and you got to be make sure there's not runners on when he comes up. Tough play Bregman. Base hit. Second straight inning, the Yankees have put their leadoff man on. And there is indeed a man on for Greg Bird. A catcher running and a power he has. See how deep Bregman is? At this point, really no chance. Great try, but the depth of where he at, he was having to play because you got to respect the power off his bat. Now 
here's Bird. Seven walks. Four for 13, a home run, two RBIs. And he has no trouble with a fastball. That's a ball. Verlander does not get the call on that breaking ball to start this at bat. Yeah, this thing uh, looks as about as good as it gets right there throughout the whole zone. Verlander has his full assortment of pitches and what I mean by that is that curveball is such a signature Verlander pick pitch the strike the slider has gotten so much better but the changeup is way above average that's the one pitch he hasn't had confidence yet we didn't see it but a couple times in game of his first game of the series Bird chased it belt high fastball strike two here was the breakdown on how good he had a fastball 71 of them then 39 and you see only the two changeups the curveball probably will play a bigger role I would think tonight all those numbers by the way add up to 124 his pitch count in game two. Reason for the breaking ball is the shift. You don't want a fastball away where Bird could just kind of slap at it to no man's land. Struck him out one way. And the first of the night for Verlander, who struck out 13 last Saturday. Show him the curveball, change the eye level, and then go with the high fastball. We saw Verlander pitch down more than he usually does and the success he had, but he's loves to get the ball up because it looks good to a hitter and at 96 97 you better have some kind of quick trigger to get on top of that now Starlin Castro who does have a quick trigger hit 380 Castro did on pitches 95 miles per hour and above that was the fourth best in baseball and he flies one into left center field back is Springer two out. A lot of first pitch swinging tonight by the Yankees. That's what I would do. I, honestly, you're, you're going to you're, you're playing with fire. The deeper you allow him to get two strikes as quickly as he can, and you know you're going to get fastballs, and you can't miss them. And I'll tell you what, Castro didn't miss that one at all by much. Well, it started with Gardner and Judge swinging at the first pitch. Three of the first six have offered. At the first delivery from Verlander and now Aaron Hicks and as a pitcher if you know it for sure well then you start throwing some first pitch sliders but the first part of the game you're trying to feel out the temperature of what everyone's trying to do Hicks has been shut down this series by Astro pitching two out of 19 first pitch breaking ball for strike one. Some conversation work with the umpire without you know doing anything obvious. Talking about McCann. One ball, one strike, one on, two out. The pick stops up. Seen a couple pitches in this inning alone that have been close. Home plate umpire is Jim Reynolds. Mark Carlson at first. Hunter Wendelstedt, Gary Cedarstrom at third. Chris Guccione is down the left field line, and Jerry Meals in right. Chad Fairchild, the replay official.
with Jim Reynolds behind home plate. Verlander with a one and four record and his highest ERA. Change up strikes out Hicks. And he didn't have to rely on getting a strike call after an inning and a half here in Houston. No score. Four, five, and six hitters for Houston. No score. Bottom of the second. Correa, Guriel, and Bregman against Luis Severino. And a one, two, three first with two ground ball outs. And a little flare into left. Hey. Effortless 98. Strike one. Coming off his first full year in the big leagues, went 14 and 6. Last year, 0 and 8 in 11 starts, went to the minors, came back in the bullpen, had to earn his job in spring training. And here he is pitching with a chance to clinch the ALCS. Nothing in two now on Correa. From Girardi to Rothschild to Severino. Well, Joe Girardi talked about loving this kid's poise when he first saw him, and the mechanical change he's made is the key to this season's success. So tied in now and so comfortable, as you mentioned, playing catch with the catcher at 98. He compared two years ago Severino's poise with your longtime teammate and good friend, Hall of Famer Greg Maddox. Yeah, I mean, it takes a special heartbeat and personality to be able. He learned a lesson. In that wild card game, but I thought it was a little unfair for him. It's the first time he ever made a start and it was in a game seven atmosphere. Correa is just jammed. Judge has out number one. 
We're joined tonight by Jake Wood and Art De La Cruz of Team Rubicon, a disaster relief charity that has deployed 2,000 volunteers into the Houston area. Tweet hashtag HR4HR. Team Noble will donate one dollar each time as part of their home runs for hurricane relief effort. Glad they're with us. Had a chance to meet them before the game and just excited now to sit back and watch baseball with the rest of us. With one out, nobody on. That's high for ball one to Guriel. See could be potentially a problem for Severino is he's getting underneath this fastball a little bit. Some of those are high. When you get underneath, you flatten out. The velocity doesn't mean as much. And you've already seen some changeups mixed in, so he doesn't have a problem with touch. It's just being able to command one side of the plate with your fastball that makes your slider so much better. What makes him awesome is that slider he throws down and away. A great first half was an American League All Star. He's one two. That's not the case for Verlander. Hard to believe with the way he's pitching right now. Verlander through the end of July was five and seven with an ERA of four and a half. Since thirteen and one. Two two. Well, Verlander, it's rare that you could start the season and every month his ERA got better to the tune in the last month where it started with a one, about 106. He started at 4.60 ERA and every month got better from that category. And then, of course, he's turned it on, as has Severino in the second half, been a, a much more dominant pitcher. 2 2 to Guriel. Lays off, full count. See if uh, he has the confidence to go with a 3 2 slider and make it more on the plate to where it entices Guriel to expand the zone. Oh! Outside for ball four. And the Astros have their first base runner of the night. See, and that's easier to track. Even though it's 100 miles an hour, you don't have to make a decision based on it breaking. And this was off the plate the whole time. And Guriel, good eye. 100 miles an hour. Man. We'll bring in a guy who's on the list of hitters the Astros need to get going, Alex Bregman. Yes, he's young. But he hit well in the divisional series against the Red Sox, hit a couple of home runs. In this series, he's two for 17. They haven't made a mistake in or part of the plate. That's where he loves it. You've got to make a mistake in there, and then he'll handle it. That's fine. But if they keep pitching him away and get his perspective and eyes to look out over the plate, then they can jam him. But he is a middle in deadly hitter with that short stroke to the ball, especially off of left handers. He took sail deep twice in the Boston series. The Astros have only one home run in this ALCS that came in game two from Correa. That is foul down the line and out of play strike two. Jay Hinch's club hit six home runs the first two games against Boston, only three in the seven games since. And he has the one in this series, Correa. A swing and a foul tip, and that hit the dirt before Sanchez came up with it. it stays 0 2. See right away, Bregman said foul ball. Joe's going to come out and ask if he thought that that ball was caught. But he clearly see it hit the dirt. And he'll just ask the umpire. We saw this in the Chicago series, and it didn't go very well. And it was overturned against Joe Matt. But this is not something that's reviewable. This is something every once in a while the umpires will get together and say, "Hey, I, 
Was your view different than mine? Did you see anything different based on the ball being caught or the ball going in the dirt? You could clearly see it went in the dirt. So a good call by home plate umpire Jim Reynolds, and the count still 0-2. Luis Severino has now gone 21 straight batters without a strikeout. That is the longest streak of his very young big league career. Yeah, a little bit of maybe some fatigue and just the quality of some of the breaks are not as consistent. Fastball, you can see he's pitched, getting him up with the fastball. And sliders, sometimes when they're good, they're too far off the plate. There's strikeout number one. Two out here in the second with Gonzalez coming up. See, this is a difference maker right here. When it's this tight, no chance. Hitter can't recognize that. When it's that tight and has that break, there's the grip. You're sitting on 96, 98, 99 miles an hour, and you've got to make a decision that you think this is a fastball. Well, when it has tight spin, that's the kind of swings you're accustomed to seeing against Severino. Now Marwin Gonzalez, who's two for 15. Should end the inning. Out is Gregorius. In is Gardner. Let's go to the third. Game six, Verlander, Severino. Both are on. No score. Play ball is MLB's initiative to inspire all forms of baseball and softball participation, making play opportunities available and fun for everyone. To learn more, go to playball.org. Off we go into the third inning. No score. Verlander back to the hill. Frazier strike one. 
I can safely say that Frazier's swing on that three run homer has turned this series around and his ability even though it may look ugly he's been a big part when he scores a run there's a good success for the Yankees a lot of success Do you want to know the numbers that would be great all right hold on. Oh, one pitch Frazier was picked up from the White Sox he has scored 34 runs in the 47 wins he's been around for five runs in the 30 losses. So when he crosses home plate and accounts, good things usually happen for the Yankees. Up and after that pitch, strike two. Yeah, he saw a smirk there because that's the pitch he wants to stay off of. He loves the ball down. And what you can do with the ball down is go even further down with a breaking ball. Top of the zone, much more difficult for Frazier to extend where he likes and where the power is down. That's foul. When we walked out of Joe Girardi's office, he said to Joe, and this is four hours before the game, any early temperature taking on the mood? I know you guys didn't want the off day yesterday because the team was so hot after the three wins at Yankee Stadium. He said, We have Todd Frazier. We'll be fine. He is the emotional leader of this team and a guy who keeps it loose. Set up here at one and two. Got under it. Shallow left center, and who wants to find it? Springer. One. Our Volkswagen Atlas road to the postseason for the Yankees. They have faced some good pitching to get to this point. That's what they did against Trevor Bauer in the Division Series Game Four, and then against Corey Kluber. You see his career ERA against the Yankees. Two starts, they knocked him around when they took on and beat the Indians, and then Keuchel finally got to him. Two nights ago at Yankee Stadium, knocked him out before he could get five innings under his belt. A bender in there for a strike to Chase Headley. Well, I said the curveball be a better pitch for him today, and he was already utilizing that. Gets a lot of strike calls with that. I call it 12 to 6 break on the curveball, and then you throw that tight slider in for the kill pitch. Chase Headley is red hot. It was hard to believe for a while that the Yankees of all teams the number one hitting home run offense number two run scoring offense and just the Yankees in general had a DH spot that was just over. I mean Headley in particular was 0 for 16 since six for eight. He does a great job here on a fastball kind of up and he gets the barrel to it. If, of course the shift is going to be employed and when you're pitching you want to entice that pitch to hit into the shift. Tough guy here to double up for sure. Gardner has a hit. The Yankees have three hits through two and a third against Verlander. He gave up five in the full nine innings last Saturday. Again, first pitch swinging. This time, Gardner flies to left center. Gonzalez two out. I'm telling you the, the formula for a pitcher and his heart rate is if you can get soft outs or easy outs and you're not having to sweat out you know diving plays in the outfield or great plays by your defense that feels a lot better in a game like this. And that was the one I call it the teeter totter effect that's the one thing the Yankees were going to have to balance early aggression try to get hit so far early aggression and some outs five out of ten has swung at the first pitch including judge who bounced into a double play his first time perfect pitch outside corner strike one Judge away in a spot that he really doesn't want it, then you just start picking it apart 
away with your off speed. He could go up with the fastball here and just keep him honest, but I think you just steal an extra three inches on that side of the plate. The vet takes care of the rook. Bottom of the third inning. No score. Welcome back to the ALCS presented by Camping World on FS1. Evan Gaddis, the DH tonight. Takes a pitch high, ball one. Gaddis, then Brian McCann, the eight and nine hitters. And then George Springer. That is a fair ball right on the line, one out. Good job by Sanchez to get to that. Before it rolled a little more to the right and went foul. One out. That was unbelievable. The English on that ball. You rarely see it not just take a turn to the right, but the way he hit it. And Sanchez aggression on it right before it was going to start moving away. Wow. And right on that line. One out, nobody on. Here's McCann, who is hitless in this LCS. Hit 18 home runs during the regular season, hit 241 in his first year in Houston. A leader. A guy who has helped guide this young pitching staff, certainly the case before Verlander showed up. Through a 101 win season. So Frazier on the other side of the bag on 0 and 2. 
Pop up to the lone soldier on the left side. Two out. Well, so far early, Severino's been outstanding, but the one thing that he's done is thrown a lot of high fastballs. And he hasn't gotten a lot of swings up there, but if he continues to get in the fatter part of the strike zone, that's where I think the Astros could break out of it. Just a little bit underneath, if I'm nitpicking just a little bit, but hard to say anything when he hasn't given up a hit and he's keeping him at bay. Oh, that's, a ball. that's outside ball one to Springer, who grounded the third his first time. Yankees have three hits, the Astros have none. The Yankees have left two on, hit into a double play, the Astros won as they got a walk to Guriel in the second. That's a ball out also. With two out to count two and up. Oh. If you told me we'd be in game six here, and obviously the third game here, we're only talking about the first two, and that nothing in the Crawford boxes, that left field kind of short but miniature Fenway wall, no way. I mean, no way, and that's how good the pitching's been. It's 19 feet tall down the line. It gets higher to 25 feet the further away you go, that next level up. But yeah, it is short, 315 down the line. How about the first time through the order, Tom Verducci? Talked about this in New York. No team was better this year, first time through against the starter than the Astros. They're three for 48 now in this series first time around and you're seeing some expansion of the strike zone early as well. Check swing it was two and oh now it's two and two. Discipline and nerves nerves will get you out from being disciplined pressure pressing as a hitter no different than pressing as a pitcher. It'll coax you into mistakes. How about that fastball at 101 for strikeout number two? And Severino says, jump on my back, boys. He takes on Verlander scoreless through three.
win tonight. We'll be back here tomorrow night for game seven with coverage beginning at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on FS1. Of course, if the Yankees win tonight, we'll see you Tuesday night on Fox for game one of the World Series in Dodger Stadium in LA. First up, Gregorius, strike one. If there is a game seven, the Yankees know it's Sabathia, who's been so good this postseason. The Astros to be determined. Charlie Morton, his spot would come around. AJ Hinch said, We are focusing on game six right now, and that's it. You know what I'm focusing on? What's that? Trying to get a scorecard right. Going through my third sheet. Yes. I'm jacked up watching this game. <laughs> Gregorius popped up his first time. Now Verlander says, "Okay, you want to call timeout? I'm going to start and stop. And you can't do anything about it." That is straight up, missing the girders up there, and Altuve is waiting for it. One out. Ken Rosenthal, you are seeing a lot of strikes down there. Joe, two patterns that we're seeing continue that started in game two with Justin Verlander. Lots of first pitch fastballs, eight of 12, and you're right, lots of strikes. 31 of 37 so far. And remember the last game, 93 strikes out of 124 pitches. That was 75%. And I remember Justin telling Tom afterward, I don't recall throwing that many strikes. Well, Ken, there's also something he's never done before that he's done tonight in the first three innings. How about this nugget? In his whole career, he's never gone three innings and not had a two ball count on a batter. He's done that tonight. Wow. Look at you. Can't keep score, but <laughs> nuggets for days. You're right. I can't keep score. Sanchez didn't like that call in the count 0 and 2. It's your boy Aaron with that nugget. And that's that top corner. Sanchez, like, look, you can tell me that's coming. I can't hit that. Sanchez chopped one up the third baseline his first time and beat the throw from Bregman for a hit. Through three innings tonight, 35 pitches for Verlander. 44 last Saturday in game two, and there's a pitching comparison. Both have been terrific. Well, he didn't like that two strike pitch. That's not like Verlander. It's too close to the plate. He will adjust right here, and it shouldn't be anywhere close to the plate if you're going to make the adjustment. That's what you do. You don't want the hitter to have any chance in an 0-2 count. Back to Verlander. Two up. Hardest job for a pitcher is to try and recognize which hitters will never get off of a fastball. In other words, with two strikes, you don't want to throw that guy a fastball because he's never coming off of it. There's a better slider right there and a weaker ground out to Verlander. With the bases empty, Greg Bird, who struck out his first time. High fastball. It's a ball, guys. Bird since the 20th of September is hit 317 with seven home runs, 17 RBIs. Is three home runs this postseason. That's a strength. The ball is strength. Foul 
left side. And just gets out of play. Such a long ways to go. That's about 110 feet from where Bregman, because in the shift, would have been a much easier play to get over there in a traditional third base. But look how far he's got to go. Up away. He didn't bite. Does he back up with a changeup or go back foot slider? Try to get him to swing over the top of it. Back it up. Struck him out fourth of the night. How about changeup? Changeup. How about good pitching in game six? No score after three and a half. Two, three, and four hitters for Houston. No score. Fourth inning. Strike Work. one. Who's going to blink first in this one, Smoltz? Tony, we've got two studs. I said it earlier when these guys hooked up. The future Verlander's on the mound right now. The KG veteran Verlander. And it played perfectly. Severino's thrilled he didn't touch that ball. One out. He did everything but touch it. And Gregorius was back there. As Reddick's now 0 for 19 and frustrated in this series. The longer this goes on for Severino, obviously you got to be thrilled if you're a Yankee fan. Because there really hasn't been anything to sweat about since he's been out there. These Astro hitters, which are really good against the fastball, have not looked that way in this series. Well, that 
definitely includes this man and a breaking ball for strike one Altuve number one in baseball on pitches 95 miles per hour or harder hit 451 there's a little 100 for you. Oh and two. Well, they got to do something, the Astros, to get him uncomfortable because right now he's as comfortable as if it was just the second game of the year, and he just has no stress on him. Wow! 99 strikeout number three, and Altuve goes back to the dugout yelling at home plate umpire Jim Reynolds for that strike two pitch. Well, he's been game planning the best hitter in baseball pretty good. That's the pitch he got away with, but then he didn't make another mistake. He was able to get the ball out of the zone and make it a soft out. And then this right here. Oh, my. Two out, nobody on. Correa. All three games in Houston have been scoreless through three and a half. And in each of the first two games, the Astros scored in the bottom of the fourth, which is where we are on a Carlos Correa RBI. Against Severino, it was a home run that just got over the wall in right. An RBI single in game one that scored Altuve. Counts 2 and 0 oh here on Correa. The 23 year old shortstop who hit 24 home runs during the regular season has won this postseason. That's a strike one in this series. And look at these numbers since game three. The starting rotation, those who have taken the ball first for Joe Girardi, an ERA of under one half a run. The Astros hitting under 100 against the Yankee starters. Here's a 3 1 pitch. Full count. Not quite sure. Correa guessing probably and giving up on that pitch early. Inviting a 3 2 count. If you look at the ball up in the middle, that's a pitch he could have crushed. 3 2. That's going to get down for a base hit in the first of the night for Houston. Hicks a good job to cut it off. And a two out single for Carlos Correa. This is what he was looking for, maybe, and he didn't miss it. 3 1 count, 2 0 -oh count. He didn't look interested in hitting anything off speed. But if the Astros are going to have success, got to start taking what the approach the Yankees have had, and that is making the Astros think about pulling, but you're going to have to stay up the middle and go the other way on 199 miles an hour. Yuli Gurriel, 13 of 34, hitting 382 this postseason. Strike one. One comment by Luis Severino leading into this start got my attention. I think it got the attention of Joe Girardi. Here's uh, the first and Correa back. Severino said, My excitement level is. I think it's 100 and Joe Girardi was asked about it and he said he has to pitch with his mind not his arm not let the situation get the better of him. Here's one into right center and Hicks is there. The Astros now have not scored in 15 straight innings. That's a season high into the fifth game six no score.
Music by the Killers as we all welcome you back to the fifth inning of game six. And he is that. He is a man. He is the man for the Houston Astros getting the deal done just before the deadline. He's been phenomenal. Eight and zero oh as an Astro and he's never lost in this ballpark. Ten starts here six and zero oh, ERA of two point five nine as Castro looks at a strike. Well, both pitchers have been unbelievable. Fourteen batters faced both of them. Verlander has given up three hits and Severino only one. Sheet before I made that comment. Nervous and trusted mine. <laughs> Both teams, by the way, in this ballpark hitting 169 in this series. Unbelievable. Dominant pitching. Just that devastating breaking ball down and away, two and two. Earlier in the year, he's throwing more of a cutter. When he got here, as we talked about, he was able to use technology, see where his arm was and release point, how it altered. Once he saw it, he corrected it, and now it's a true slider. Little pop up, easy for Guriel. Wow. The ALCS on FS1 is presented by Camping World, America's number one RV retailer since 1966. And is sponsored by Hot Cook Tire. Chase down your passion, never halfway. And by Steal a Base, Steal a Taco, only a Taco Bell. The beloved Craig Vigio, a Hall of Famer. And he is. Part of the old guard here who's loving every minute of what he sees with this new version of his ball club. Good to be able to catch up with him before games. And his son playing well in the Blue Jays organization. One out. Nobody on it. By the way, Craig came up as a catcher, moved to second base, center field too. His boy is a second baseman. That's up and away. Hicks didn't offer it to pitch ball one. Hicks two for 20 against Houston. Two ball count. Second time that's happened. He did it with Bird and eventually struck him out. Two and zero on Hicks. And two and one. Obviously, Aaron did not agree. Close. But a great pitch. 2 0 count. Think you might think you get in the fastball. Not in this situation. 0 0. 2 much heat at 96. 2 and 2. Strikeouts on the night for Justin Verlander. That is just staying behind it and letting it eat. That is a fastball that, because of the way he throws it, I know it says 96, but it appears at 100. 
to the hitters. He's got legs and arms coming at you. Frazier fouls it back strike one. Frazier had a couple of decent swings against Verlander back in the third ended up flying out to center. See what he's done in this ALCS four for 17 one of the four left the ballpark into right to get the scoring started in game three. First pitch strikes on 13 of 17 hitters faced. The ball. Oh, good breaking ball. Verlander does not get the call. One ball, one strike. Is doesn't say anything, but his body language tells you he thought that pitch was strike two. It's a great pitch. I don't know how, as a pitcher, you stand out there, you look at the hitter, and go, "Okay, you're supposed to swing at that." But it was so good it fooled him. That's a better one. Strike two. Speed him up, slow him down. Does he speed him back up with two strikes and a high fastball? <laughs> what a pitch! Three in a row. Strikeout number six. And Verlander just toying with him. To the delight. Of those packed into Minute Maid Park in Houston, no score. Six, seven, and eight hitters for Houston, still scoreless. Bregman first up, struck out his first time, takes a ball. This kind of game, you almost think it takes something that you would never expect, like a butt hit or a chop or something to go either team's way where it starts tilting that momentum. Because right now, you're bowing down to both starters. You're like, you're better than me right now. I need you to make a mistake if you're a hitter going up to the plate and not missing it.
One one pitch. 56 pitches for Severino in case you're worried about that. 61 through five innings for Verlander. Let's go back to the strikeout of Frazier. Right, anyway. That's upstairs. Three balls and a strike. Brakeman struck out his first time after the one out walk to Yuli Guriel. This postseason, as T-Mobile is guaranteeing at least one million dollars for hurricane recovery efforts with every home run hit, worth ten thousand dollars, help break one million dollars by including hashtag HR4HR in your tweet. T-Mobile will donate an additional one dollar each time. To speak to the dominance of the Yankee pitching, the Astros have not had a multiple hit inning since Chapman in the ninth inning. They didn't have one in New York. Tough to score that way. Here's Marlon Gonzalez. Strike Woo. one. Gonzalez fly to left his first time. He is two for 16 in this LCS. So think about that. Game two of the ninth, the 27 batting innings in New York, three games worth. They're looking for their first multiple hit inning. Since then. Not much of a lead by Bregman. There hasn't been much running in this series really at all. Bregman stole 17 bases during the regular season. None and no attempts so far this postseason. Whew. Strike two. Gonzalez with his protest. Bregman anticipates or should anticipate the ball in the dirt, especially with two strikes. For a young pitcher to have the back door slider, meaning throwing it away, trying to catch the outside part of the plate. Usually you have one side of the plate you like to go to often. And he's been able to throw that pitch and make it doubly hard on the left handed hitters because you give up on it. One, two. Not hard hit. Castro, one play, one out. Down to second is Bregman. But a productive out. At least they have their first opportunity. First time a runner's been at second base in this game. One out for Evan Gannis. Managerial switch. It wasn't Beltron tonight, the DH. He said one of these two guys has got to get hot. One of them's got to get a big hit, and he wants it from Evan Gaddis right here. Yeah, he does, and he wants it to left field over that wall because that's where Gaddis could go. High ball. High velocity gives him problems. They're blocked by Sanchez, ball one. The 27 year old Gregorius is going to come in and 
calm down the 23 year old as the 24 year old joins him out on the mound tomorrow on Fox number five Wisconsin host Maryland at 1130 a.m. Eastern followed by Baker Mayfield and ninth ranked Oklahoma taking on K State that's tomorrow on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go every game is everything. That discussion right there with the middle infielders, especially Didi. You're watching Bregman if you're an infielder trying to see if Bregman is helping the hitter with location or anything that he sees. Because once you get to second, you see what the pitcher sees and the catcher giving the signs. Ball two. And the reason that's important is if a hitter knows the location, you can eliminate some pitches. So in other words, if a hitter knows that the pitch is coming inside, chances are that's going to be something firm, a fastball. You're not going to throw a front door slider. their DH spot while well, the focus has been on the Yankee DH and then Headley got hot Astros DHs are one for 18 in this series and you cannot give in on this 3 0 count McCann on deck base open do not just throw a fastball thinking he's taken two walks in the inning two on one out. That was a changeup. He's gone to a changeup to right handers behind in the count. He did it twice to Correa. He did it twice there to Gaddis. This is a changeup that just kind of floats in and easily to read out of the hand for Gaddis. McCann has taken a lot of pitches, especially first pitch. At some point, he's got to change his game plan and be on attack mode right here first pitch even though it was a four pitch walk this would be the time to see a pitch in the, in the area you want and let it go that wasn't it because that was paid away and McCann was even going to say I think that's a ball 0 for 20. Last 20 at bats is McCann. Set up at 0 and 2. Wow, that's tough right there. Good pitching, but tough on McCann on two pitches that he's not going to be able to do anything with off the plate. toughest task of a, of a catcher when you're trying to get pitches for your pitcher and then you're at the plate and you got to decide how much you're willing to complain when you're at the plate and they're having that conversation right now because you want those same pitches for Verlander so how much do you sacrifice your own hitting at the plate for knowing that that guy who's behind you you remind him when Verlander's on the mound we want that same pitch. A.J. Hinch talked about the importance of getting the lead tonight. A chance here. One two pitch. Two and two. he couldn't do anything with that's a ball but he called it a strike comes right back with a tough slider so now they're trying to steal on the outside part of the plate not a bad job by Severino and then on the outer part of the plate McCann said first time I can get that fastball he gets a chance and gets his first hit in a long time what a relief 
And now the Astros, if they can get two more runs, will feel like an eight nothing lead with Verlander on the mound. Second and third, one out. Severino, Springer, ball one. It really wasn't even a mistake by Severino. The two walks were on close pitches, with the exception of Gaddis. McCann just hit a, a pitcher's pitch. Swing in the count two and zero. Oh. Another good pitch right there by Severino. Chad Green, the right-hander, getting loose. Now, for all the meetings we have at the mound and an overkill, this one's a good one because Sanchez is back there, understanding he just threw a real good pitch. Two and zero, oh, second and third. You don't have to give in right here. Even though Springer is struggling, it's not the end of the world with a base open and a guy who's been struggling just as much, Reddick on deck. So the last pitch is really good to Springer. He thinks this is a good pitch, and it is. But two things didn't happen. One, it wasn't called a strike, and two, he didn't swing. coach out of the dugout so earlier I said the only thing to nitpick Severino was the fastball getting underneath missing up it's come into play here in this inning so he's missed up and what that does when you miss up it's easier for the hitters to recognize that the pitch is down breaking away you might be able to lay off because it's too big of a variance. Josh Reddick is going to break out of it. The Astros want it to be right now. 0 for 19 in this LCS. 6 for 35 in the postseason. Bases loaded, one out. And they have a one run lead for Verlander. Yeah, in an ideal situation, you don't want the medium fly ball. Not a lot of speed on second and third with Gaddis basically and McCann, two catchers. But the speed of Reddick, if the ball's on the ground, he's got to get it. I think he was expecting first pitch to have a wrinkle on the end of it, strike one, as he fouled it off his leg or foot. And it caught him just behind that shin guard he wears on his right leg. and a run is home. This is closer to what the Houston lineup has made pitchers pay for in the sense that they have not expanded the strike zone in this inning and the benefit has been walks and a timely hit. Reddick shallow center Hicks and that won't do anything. A big out picked up by Severino to keep it one to nothing. 
And now Jose Altuve will be the hitter with two out. Well, again, medium fly ball wasn't going to get it done. So short of Didi catching that ball might have changed the opinion. Reddick still frustrated. Pitch of the night. And I don't mean that for stating the obvious is because Altuve is such an aggressive first pitch hitter. The importance is going to be on what the game plan that Sanchez and Severino has. You would almost have to guarantee a slider right here. And I would think Altuve would be sitting on that as well. Altuve likes velocity. Bases loaded, two out, one to nothing game. Breaking ball, base hit. Gattis scores. McCann to the plate. Altuve delivers, three nothing Houston. Exactly what Altuve got is a hanging slider. He went up there looking for it, and the key is he didn't miss it. And Todd Fraser almost got it. When the Astros need a big hit, they call on him. Jose Altuve has made it three nothing. Severino is out. Chad Green coming in. The Astros lead in game six by three. The frustration of Reddick to the elation, thanks to Altuve. And their little leader just made it 3-0 Houston. And with first and third, two out, Chad Green takes over. Chad Green got a great fastball. He also throws a slider entering a momentum offense right here first pitch against a great hitter in Correa fastball down for ball one. 
Three walks in the inning really the undoing for Severino four in the four and two thirds he pitched. Allowed three hits. Three runs so far. For Jose Altuve over at first his first RBI since division series game two here in Houston against the Red Sox and finally multiple hit inning for the Astros offense something that was a regular happening in the regular season for the most part. Here comes a 2 0 from Green. What's left out here John for the rest of this game we're in the bottom of the fifth inning. The Astros will lead by at least three going to the sixth is Verlander is dealing. But there are question marks in that Houston bullpen. And guys who have been so reliable have not been in this ALCS for A.J. Hinch. Yeah, pitch counts don't even matter today basically for Verlander. Two one. Without Tuve running, this ball is hit straight up into the air. Castro has it. The inning is over, but a big one for the Astros facing elimination in game six. Three runs for Verlander. Into the sixth we go. Welcome back to the ALCS presented by Camping World on FS1. The guys with the RBIs, Altuve on the right, and for McCann has doubled his first postseason extra base hit since 2010 Division Series Game 4. When he homered up Bumgarner and the Giants. That drove in the first run. Altuve hit a hanging slider for a two run single in the left. And now Verlander, who had to sit. Happily so for just under 28 minutes while his teammates got him a lead. Gives up his second hit to Chase Headley. 
who's all of a sudden the hottest hitter in the Yankee lineup when the leadoff man is on for the third time in this game for New York. Well, when you pitch a game like this, you tell yourself as a pitcher, do not pay attention to the scoreboard. Zero, 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 zero the whole way. But when you get three runs, the very next inning, you've got to shut down the other team. So this is a difficult inning, even though he's been giving an opportunity for some mistakes, but you don't want to think that way. And Justin Verlander's been in enough of these games where he understands putting a zero squelches anything that the Yankees can do to feel like they're right back in it. Verlander never led by more than one in game two. He leads by three, and that pitch just up and away to Brett Gardner, who for the first time doesn't swing at the first pitch. He singled in the left in the first, fly to left in the third. Mistakes in games where, oh, okay, now I can give up two. You can't think like that. It's easy to do, though, especially when you sit down there and you get out of your rhythm. When you're in a 0 0 game, it seems like you're pitching every three minutes because no actions happen. 28 minutes on the bench, rewarded with three runs. Gardner gets under it, skies it into shallow center, out goes Correa. One on, one out. And the batter will be judged. Only 65 pitches for Verlander through five and a third. Outstanding and really. I, I agree with what the Yankees were trying to do. It'd be easy for people to sit back and go. You got to drive his pitch count up. Not that easy when he's pouring in strikes at the rate that he's doing. Judge. Wow. Man, he's right. 96, and Judge was right there, ready for it. But foul back, strike one. Judge has been a different hitter since that 3 2 home run off of Will Harris. That time he looked ready for the first pitch fastball. And it was the first time that Verlander didn't paint him on the outside corner. And BP a little bit. First of all, you just can't imagine where Judge hits half the baseballs in BP. But he was trying to hit one way over the train on that one. Again, strike two. Big difference for the baby bombers as they call them Aaron Judge their road numbers on the left Gary Sanchez their home numbers on the right five of their six combined home runs have been at Yankee Stadium. No two. That's a great pitch and the reason that's a great pitch. Is it's telling him he's not afraid of his fastball to go to judge, but he just changed the eye level. And when you change the eye level, the guy who's been on your fastball, that's all it takes. See that first move that he makes with his upper body? Now you can throw a breaking ball off of that pitch. The judge got a piece of it. That was the that was what Verlander wanted because that was a recipe for a ground ball or a swing and a miss. Really good pitch.
So the way that they've been pitching Judge, you would never anticipate he was going to see this many fastballs. But a great job by Judge almost getting that one. He comes right back with another one. And then that changed it a little bit as long as this pitch. And that's all it takes to get him a little bit off the fastball, a little bit in between. Great job by Verlander. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Judge in 26 this postseason. That ties for the most ever. And as we say with all these records, now there are more opportunities. More opportunities to put up big numbers. More opportunities to, in Judge's case, put up strikeouts. Alfonso Soriano, Aaron Judge, two Yankees. Soriano back in 03. This is just two heavyweights. The Yankees and their offense. Gregorius hits one into right, a base hit. It falls in front of Reddick. And that will bring in 24-year-old power hitting catcher Gary Sanchez representing the tying run. Big hit there by Gregorius. Good job, aggressive again on a fastball. And he brings up Sanchez. Sanchez has been aggressive on just about every first pitch against Verlander. And Mack and McCann and him are going to talk about the strategy they had and that strategy they had did not happen with first and second or two runners on against Sanchez. Look at the difference when it comes to getting ahead on the count. This postseason he's four for six. He had three RBIs in game four. He had two RBIs and a home run in game five. Tonight one for two. takes right there by Sanchez he's really geared to middle in trying to launch the ball in the air 2 0 pitch here almost feels like you got to throw him a slider 36 home runs all in for the year 33 plus three in the postseason.
One RBI for McCann, two for Altuve, three nothing behind Verlander. Yuli Gurriel against Chad Green, strike one. Bottom of the sixth. The mood has lightened considerably down in that dugout. A tension filled first four plus innings. But a three run fifth. And they have their horse on the mound. Strike two on Gurriel. Yeah, and the problem still, as, as much as they like the lead, you've got to put the Yankees away. Their offense is relentless, and they grind out, as you saw in that last inning, right after the team gave up three, they were a swing away from tying it up. The problem is, it wasn't a swing out of Sanchez. We'll show you exactly what Verlander was able to do on that 3 0 count to Sanchez. Goriel. Oh! Oh, that's a ball. Two and two. Guriel, then Bregman, then Gonzalez. Green stranded two inherited runners in the fifth. Starts it with Guriel in the sixth. Starts it with a pop up. Shallow center. Hicks. One. Let's go back to that Gary Sanchez at bat. Well, Sanchez did a good job by not expanding the zone, and Verlander was hoping he would. But he gets the three and zero, oh, and then you just got to be committed. You got to let it go. You, as they say, let it eat. Three and zero. Oh, look for an area and let the bat go through the zone. And he was in between, and that in between check swing was a stress relief for the Astros and Verlander. Bregman. Drew a leadoff walk in the fifth inning. One of three handed out by Severino. Who goes four and two thirds, three runs, three hits, four walks, three strikeouts. On the hook right now. Here's a 1 0. You know, this year coming in, Severino against Houston in three starts. 0 and 1 record, ERA of 7.71. And they hit 340 against him. Against everyone else, 15 and 5. 2.84 ERA. They hit 201 against him. So the Astros, you know, they didn't knock the cover off the ball tonight. Kind of had his number. Brigman flies one into left for Gardner. Two out. Home runs mean more this postseason as T-Mobile guarantees at least $1 million for hurricane recovery efforts. With every home run hit worth $10,000, help break $1 million by including hashtag HR4HR in your tweet. T-Mobile will donate an additional $1 each time. Well, part of that success the Astros had against Severino is making him throw strikes with his fastball or being able to pound those off-speed pitches and not expand the zone. The Astros do that about as good as anybody. They control the strike zone as hitters until the Yankees determined and changed their approach. The Yankees have been doing a fantastic job throughout this entire series. Marwin Gonzalez took a ball, now another. In the seventh against Verlander, it'll be Bird, Castro, and Hicks. Yankees wanted to be in this position winning counting outs. And now if you're A.J. Hinch you're hoping that your star can give you two more innings. And if he has to go to one guy he would like to go to Giles to close it out much better at home than he has been on the road. Three and one. Budweiser game summary as we are in the bottom of the sixth. 
Ryan McCann broke through. An RBI double in the fifth inning. Jose Altuve loves hitting here at home. Two run single in the fifth. That's all the scoring. Severino couldn't get through five. Verlander dominant. Five hits through six. Seven strikeouts, no walks. Well, what we said in the open is what was it going to take to get this offense turned around? A big hit by one of the left handed hitters in this lineup. So far, it is McCann who got a huge double to get the scoring started for the Astros. Here's Gannis. The ball. Gaddis drew a walk in that three run fifth. Get the ball up off. Two and oh. Stadium, and it was. This place is no picnic either. It is loud inside this stadium for a team that has been building the last few years and broke through with 101 wins this year. Trying to force a game seven. That's strike two. Well, what this crowd and city got used to and spoiled a little bit is offensively, they've watched a great team throughout the year. Beat up some pretty good pitching. And what they were confused about coming in here is where did it go? What happened? And will we get it back? I mean, that's the sense you got from a nervous crowd until they got those runs. Two two. Well, you think about it coming into this game, hitting 147 in this ALCS after hitting 282 during the regular year. They still have only three hits in this game, but they've been handed five walks. And that's what they're more accustomed to. The five through nine hitters for the Astros coming in, nine for 76. A swing and a miss. Gattis strikes out on a 3 2 pitch from Chad Green. That sends game six into inning seven. Bird Castro Hicks coming up, 3 0 Houston.
official caps, hoodies, jackets, and more. Celebrate your favorite team with the latest postseason gear at MLBShop.com. Seventh inning now, and the five, six, and seven hitters for the Yankees down by three. Verlander back to work. Greg Bird. Only 76 pitches for Verlander. He can't pitch this guy any better than he has the first two times. Struck him out each time in the second and in the fourth. If there's a necessity for game seven, who that starter might be for Houston, pretty much can guess it's going to be CC for New York. But when you're down three games to two, it's not a fun position knowing you want to pitch and there's nothing you can do about it. You're hoping your teammate gives you an opportunity to redeem yourself if that, in fact, is Charlie Morton for the Astros. Two two. So Matthew is so good in game three. Got six no runs, three hits, and an eight to one win. Three two here is high and a leadoff walk. That's the first walk handed out by Verlander here tonight. The type of game that Verlander's pitching reminded me of one of the greatest games I've ever seen pitched, and that was Steve Avery in game six on the road against the Pirates. 0 0 in the ninth. We win it 1 0. I get a chance to pitch game seven. I wanted to throw up the entire game <laughs> watching it. But that's what Verlander's trying to do. He's trying to keep it at zeros, not have any hope, because I mentioned the Yankees, much like they did in game four, turned it around and rallied and came back and flipped the series really and it was in this inning that they got on the board in game four that's a breaking Woo! ball for a strike it was a home run by Aaron Judge that chased Lance McCullers Junior and a triple then a sack fly then four runs in the eighth and a 6 4 win different story tonight against Verlander. And Castro is going to say that hit him. Right now it's called ball one inside. Here's another look. Now that got him. Got him on the wristband. Yep. Now this shouldn't take very long. They had an earlier scenario chase Headley but the problem was it was his pant leg and there was no way to tell if the pant leg got hit on a ball that bounced in and ultimately was called that he was not hit by the pitch a replay review sponsored by W.B. Mason but this is very clear and should bring up the tying run with nobody out here in the seventh. Even the crowd can't really react. They show it on this massive board here at Minute Maid Park. All right. Well, if you're Justin and you understand that it's probably going to be first and second, nobody out, it changes your focus. You just try to avoid the beginning. Todd Frazier will be up. And there's a call hit by pitch. Aaron Hicks is coming up 
With two on and nobody out. That's right. You got Hicks, then you got Frazier. So that's the bottom of the lineup for the Yankees who have come up big throughout the postseason at times. And then the hot Chase Headley batting ninth. There's some tension you can feel in this park right now. A walk, a hit batsman. The Yankees with a tying run at the plate. Aaron Hicks, one home run this postseason, 15 during the regular season, but he has been shut down by the Astros. is two for 21 not one RBI in this LCS account two and oh it's right about now where when you've gone nine innings you start feeling the effect of mental fatigue it's not so much physical it's mental and you've got to grind that out at this point from this point on Anytime you've gone 925, you get that four day off. It's right around now where you really got to focus on location. The ball. ball three. Eight of 11 have missed from Verlander in this inning, whereas he has been pounding the strike zone. Not off by much, but he's missed to put himself in trouble here in the seventh. Three and one. Well, Justin, you want action somehow, some way. The pop ups he's been getting or a rollover ground ball. And if you're Hicks, you're looking at one pitch and one pitch only to drive. There's no way Hicks could hit this. That's why he had to lay off of it. 3 1 count for his advantage. He thought he had walked. McCann framed it full count. Keep it fair. He was all over it. I think 3 2 right here. You trust your best secondary pitch. Tried to go away, pulls the fastball. That's what I said. Location when you get late in the game, you really have to grind on it more than velocity. Maybe a 3 2 slider right here after an aggressive count. Now you've got the hitter thinking, will he challenge me again with a fastball? Was yes. Wow. That time he tried to bear it in and it leaked out over the plate. Miles per hour is fine. It's just what happens is you don't have the luxury of being as pinpoint late. See how the ball leaks to the outside corner, trying to have that ball more over the plate inside. It's a swing and a miss if he throws the slider. It's whether he feels comfortable that he's going to make the better pitch with that slider. Nothing but heat so far with a count three and two.
Last two innings. Big time stress innings. For Justin. Ninth pitch of this at bat. Finally, a breaking ball, and Hicks was able to put the bat on him. Yeah, he didn't get it where he wanted, though. That one covered too much of the plate. Great battle right here by both Hicks and Verlander. Gets a little bit too much on the side of the ball. See, it almost backs up a little bit. had no chance it's not fair to him I mean he was getting on the fastball and Verlander absolutely on the 10th pitch made the best slider of the night look like an inside fastball and bury it down and in that's the spot much tighter spin you could see how far he missed it by and an exhale what a battle Hicks was up there ready Now Brent Strom the pitching coach for Houston comes out to talk with first and second one out and Todd Frazier coming up. That's a good mental break right here and just reinforcing what Todd Frazier's looking to do. And the previous at bat he threw a lot of fastballs and a lot of high fastballs and buckled him with that curveball. So is Frazier going up there determined to hit a breaking ball. Those are the cat and mouse games. If the Astros win tonight, we'll be back here tomorrow night for Game 7. Coverage beginning at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on FS1. The Yankees win tonight. We'll next see you on Tuesday night from L.A. on Fox for Game 1 of the World Series. Here's Frazier. Popped up back and out of play, strike one. Frazier definitely looking for the breaking ball. That was the last thing in his mind. Whenever you look that foolish. Sometimes go and determine that you're going to wait on that pitch. Puts the foot down. He's more balanced and looks like. Oh man. In his mind I had my pitch. Fly ball. Springer at the wall, a leap and a catch. Two out. And they almost doubled off Starlin Castro at first. Wow, did Fraser smoke this ball? This ball. Look at Springer time everything perfectly. Wasn't going to get out. That's a huge wall. But you watch the Yankees bench. I've got to believe they thought it was a tie game. With a catch by Springer in deep center, the reaction by Verlander, who put the first two on with a walk and a hit batsman, now has Chase Headley standing in his way. Chase has muscled two pitches for hits. They've yet to get inside on Chase Headley, and they've yet to make a breaking ball down to Chase. Maybe the discussion McCann and Verlander were having.
Headley back in game two hit a ball off Verlander to the top of the wall and right. It was caught by Reddick. Seven for 13 in this LCS. Tying run at the plate. Two out. You can just tell Chase is much more comfortable tracking the baseball as if he knows what's coming. If he doesn't get too aggressive, he can coax the pitch he wants. Frazier still talking to himself in the dugout. Game close to tying it. Hit it over 400 feet into the glove of Springer. 2 0. Strike one. Well, the decisions right now, the computer inside of AJ's head has got to be a difficult scenario. As this has been really two really tough innings on Verlander. How much longer will he go with him? To the right side. Altuve. Inning over. Verlander put the two on to start the inning. Struck out Hicks. Frazier the long fly ball. Ground out by Headley. Time to stretch. They're already stretched here in Houston. Three nothing.
Let's give you a stat cast powered by Amazon Web Services back in the first inning. Ball hit by Judge. Look at the exchange and how quick Correa and then Altuve were. Turning a double play and taking care of Judge to back up Justin Verlander. And then moments ago, the top of this seventh inning, playoff baseball at its best. The leap, the catch by George Springer in center. And then the reaction by the all-star center fielder. And the veteran right-hander who has pitched shutout baseball through seven. Chad Green back to the hill. First up, the number nine man, Brian McCann, a breaking ball for a strike. With Springer to follow, then Reddick. Hands RBI double started the scoring in the fifth. Strike two. The Yankees against Verlander in the series. Now two for 20 with runners on base. One for 13 tonight. I got to believe it would be so impressive if they stay with him to go out for the next inning. But what he went through in the last two, I got to think he's done. They're going to trust their bullpen with a three, at least three at run lead. Here's one into center, McCann. Now one for three on the night as Hicks puts it away. It certainly looks like that's it. I mean, he absolutely, the Yankees put him to the tilt in the last two innings, and he got it up and made some pitches, but the Yankees' awful, great approach. They were a foot away or two feet away from making this game tie game. Awfully good approach by the Yankees tonight. Made him work for everything. Get the ball. Say this for the guy coming out of the bullpen if that is the case with Brad Peacock. He can't be any better than the guy who just pitched the first seven innings. And that's why it's a tough decision. I mean you're, you're talking about thinking that every single chance the Verlander you know can go out there and duplicate what he did in game two and, and he basically did but it wasn't easy with the way the Yankees battled it. Springer is hitless tonight did have an important walk in that fifth inning against Severino. With the ball up. He's two for 20 in this ALCS but he was cheered loudly coming to the plate here in the seventh after that catch. In the top half. How about this guy? I can't wait to watch the future of Green. I still would love to see him in the rotation, but he's so valuable out of the pen for Joe, and he's eating up these innings. And that'll get somebody going. That last slider, not as crisp. I mean, there are decisions to be made, obviously, for Joe Girardi. There are there always are, but his team's up three games to two. You don't take anything for granted. He wants to go for the kill here tonight. But if he doesn't get it, he'd love to have as many arms available in that shutdown bullpen as he can behind Sabathia in a game seven tomorrow. Absolutely. And Chad Green is doing everything he can to allow Girardi that luxury. Second strikeout for Green. You want to talk about easy gas from Severino to Green. It's a little bit different, but Green has this. It's not even an invis invisible, as you would call, but the hitter just doesn't track his fastball. Tremendous spin. We've tracked the frustration of Josh Woo! Reddick. He's 0 for 3 tonight, 0 for 20. ALCS. That's a record for hitless at bats in LCS play. He wants no part of it. Set up here at 0 2. The Yankees in the eighth inning, and it appears it's going to be against Peacock coming out of the bullpen. will have the top of their order Gardner, Judge, Gregorius. Here's the 0 2 from Green. 97.
Outside for ball one. crowd knows that Justin's not coming back out. Well we've seen Verlander waving to people up in the seats. I'm assuming the Kate Upton. Yeah yeah. Your fiance. You can be rest assured that's that's yeah. exactly it. That's strike three over the outside corner and we'll see if the Astros go to their bullpen. We're saying they will. Here comes Brad Peacock. Verlander finished after seven with his Astros up. Three nothing. The ALCS on FS1 is presented by Camping World, America's number one RV retailer since 1966, and is sponsored by Steel A Base, Steel A Taco, only at Taco Bell. Eighth inning now, top of the order. Verlander finished. That's a ball. Ball one upstairs, and there is some kind of pressure on Brad Peacock. There are the numbers during the postseason. This would typically be Chris Davinsky, their all star setup man, but he's looked a little off lately, and so it's Peacock. I think, I'm going to guess, to the surprise of many here at Minute Maid Park. Yeah, you just can't give any free passes, even if they get hits, right? You've got some room to work with. But you got to establish yourself right away. The key, and it sounds so obvious, when you come in the game of this magnitude, get the first out. You're always better off with the first out, even if they get traffic after that. 2 1 pitch to Gardner leading off it is hit down the left field line. That ball is into the corner. And caught by Marwin Gonzalez. What a catch as he bangs into the sidewall. There is no room down there 
for which he can make this play seem any easier than he just did. Foul ball caught to start this eighth. A huge relief for Peacock to do exactly that. Get that first out with now Judge at the plate. Everybody backs up on the left side of the infield. And here's a high fly ball into left center field. Watch this one fly. Out of here for a home run as Judge has made it three to one. His third of the series. And a tape measure, majestic fly ball to left center. It gets out of the park. Well, he likes the ball coming into him, and that's where Peacock and his sinker. Perfect recipe for Judge. He has been so much better and taking a lot of good swings tonight. See how that ball stays middle. And that looked like a BP swing where we were marveling on how far he could hit a baseball. It just sounds different. It looks different and it carries different than any other hitter. Ball. ball one now to Gregorius, and they just now got another reliever up in their bullpen. Gregorius with a count one and all. Takes ball two. And Peacock moves on the side of the rubber depending on which hitter's in there. And it really is difficult at times to create a slider that he's trying to throw away to come back in. And here's a good meeting at the mound. His slider has not been as sharp. When he is good, it's turning the corner. He has that lower three quarter kind of underneath the ball action. Now the closer has to get up here in the eighth inning. Only one out in a 2 0 count. On D.D. Gregorius. Kenny, let's talk Verlander. John, here is a stat you can appreciate. Justin Verlander has now started five elimination games in his career. His ERA is 1.21. He has thrown 24 straight scoreless innings. That's just, people have no idea how unbelievable that is and what a heartbeat you got to have and a, and a willingness to say, I'm not giving in and you're not scoring. Crowd back behind Brad Peacock. 2 0 pitch now to Gregorius. I got to believe this is last hitter. He has shown signs to his manager that the moment is bigger right now than he's ready for. And that's normal. You, you, you guys do that. It happens. You get amped up. You realize. The situation is a lot different than you've ever been in before. Here's a 3-0 to Gregorius. <laughs> and it sounds crazy, but the walk just seems like a bigger rally than a hit. If he gives up a hit here, that's way better than a free pass. Because at least swinging the bat, putting it in play, your defenders can help you. Gregorius pops it up into left easy this time for Gonzalez big out two down and the batter will be Sanchez now he'll move on the rubber and Sanchez is another guy with that fastball coming into him he loves it. Peacock has not thrown a slider that has turned yet. He's got to throw a slider on the outside part of the plate. But see, the angle he's creating is different. At the first base side, he loses that leverage against right handers. If you've got a good slider, you want to be on the third base side of the rubber, but this is not his path. That was a good one, strike one. Much better. He wants to create a, a direct line where he's at. And he likes getting the ball on that side of the plate easier from the first base side of the rubber. Straight. 
2 He doesn't want another one of those, I can promise you that. Peacock trying to get three big outs. That was a good pitch. Good try to get it on the outside part. Fastball after a bunch of sliders. Now you can go back to the slider on that same plane on the outside part. Make sure it's down. Two and two. From 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. He just doesn't look as comfortable in his pitches, but he needs just one pitch here because this will be the last one he gets if Sanchez gets on. 3 2 pitch. He got it working. Yes, Peacock gave up a home run, but he just got three big outs and got Gary Sanchez watching. Bottom of the eighth inning. Altuve loves it. So do those packed in here in Houston. Astros up by two. With the home run hit in the top of this eighth inning, Aaron Judge made sure the team mobile 
is donating an additional ten thousand dollars for hurricane recovery efforts. He's made it a two run game as El Tuve faces David Robertson and takes a ball. Robertson trying to hold it to a two run game. Giles will take over next inning. As Brad Peacock got the job done, did give up a run. They chant MVP as the count goes to one and one. Yeah, and that's what Joe's hoping. This is a quick inning. Keep it there and cause some havoc for closer Giles. Even though he's been better much at home, you know that two runs, anything can happen with this powerful lineup. Strike two on Altuve. How good was Chad Green yet again? Two and a third. No runs or hits. Three strikeouts, one walk. Uh, and he held it right here. He's been unbelievable, and he's been unbelievable all year, as has the bullpen for the Yankees. The Yankees just make it so difficult on the opposing pitcher. No, he did not. Two and two, the count now on Altuve. I wouldn't think. I mean, everybody's available basically in a game seven. That's why it's so hectic. Verlander won't be. Severino won't be. But whether or not Green will be will be yet to be determined if there is a game seven. Now a 2 2 from Robertson is hit in the air to left. Back at the wall. It's gone. Not too big. Two MVP candidates go deep in the eighth inning here in game six. And Altuve's makes it a three run game again. Judges would have went out of anywhere, but this is what makes this park unique. Finally, that left field came into play. I still can't believe that's the first time Altuve finds it. Correa rips one fair into the corner. He's got a double with nobody out of the eighth. Altuve basically reaches out and one hands it. And because he's played here so much and it doesn't take a lot to get it over. This is a much needed run for the Astros and A.J. Hinch. The first extra base hit for Altuve since his three homer game against Boston in game one of the division series. And Correa smokes one into the left field corner. Still nobody out. And the batter is Guriel. Changes it for Joe. He doesn't want his reliever spending too much more energy, so he's got Batances getting ready in case there's another hit. Keep Robertson fresher for tomorrow. Prior to the home run here in the eighth inning, the Yankees' bullpen had gone 17 and two thirds innings and allowed only three runs, struck out 17, walked. Seven and opponents, in this case the Astros, hitting 173 against him, but a homer and a double. And an RBI chance here for Yuli Gurriel. Base hit. Correa had to hold. 
field, and it's first and third with nobody out. It's gone homer, double, single. And now Alex Bregman will be the hitter. Joe Girardi said before the game, it's almost like our group does better, plays better when there's little or no margin for error. He and the Yankees may get their chance tomorrow with the way this is going. Four to one, Astros first and third, nobody out. And Robertson is getting hit around. Bregman hitless tonight. Yeah, when you're four and zero oh this year in elimination games, you feel pretty good about that statement right there. And that's what they are coming in. If there's going to be that game seven, they'll be facing their fifth elimination game. And that's before the World Series. They won the wild card playoff game against the Twins, even though their starter only went one third of an inning. They got down two games to nothing to Cleveland, won three in a row. And now they were trying to clinch here tonight, but the Astros. Heating up. Bragman now into left center field. This ball is down. Correa scores. Guriel brought to the plate. Throw by Gregorius is dropped by Sanchez. To third is Bregman. And it's all Houston tonight. Six to one. Be it for Robertson. Bregman breaks through. It goes down as a two run double and an error on the shortstop. Gregorius on the throw. And after scoring nine runs to the first five games of this ALCS, the Astros have broken loose in game six.
It's now a five run game, six to one. Stat pass powered by Amazon Web Services as you look at the numbers on the home run for Jose Altuve, which made it four to one here in the eighth inning. They've tacked on two more. Changes the decision for A.J. Hinch as well for the night. Well, here's Dellen Batances, who has had such a tough time with his control. Been a couple of flashes where he had it put together, including that extra inning loss in game two in the division series in Cleveland. The last time we saw him, he walked the first two and got yanked. That's inside. 2 and 0. Oh. That was in what was an 8 to nothing game. It ended 8 to 1. Game 3. Pitch better a little bit on the road. Maybe struggles at home with everybody knowing what's going on and not being able to get it done. 97. Count 2 and 1. The Astros with runners in scoring position. In this ALCS, the first five games, they were four for 27. Tonight, four for six. Time was called at the plate. In nobody out, runner at third. Good pitch from Batances, two and two. When he's on, he is. Oh, he's unhittable, no doubt. But it's fastball command, as it is with every pitcher. I mean, he's got to wipe out hard slider slash power curve, whatever you want to call it. Two two. Struck him out, one away. Gonzalez 0 for 3 tonight. But the home runs now hit today by both Aaron Judge and Jose Altuve. T Mobile will be donating an additional $20,000 for hurricane recovery efforts. It's 77 home runs so far this postseason. The total amount has grown to $770,000. Help break $1 million by including hashtag HR4HR in your tweet. That's a ball. T-Mobile will donate an additional one dollar each time. Ball one inside to Gattis. Uh, this has been an amazing series, and I'm not surprised it's going to Game Seven. It's the way it looks like right now, with the five-run lead. To find out that it seems rare that a, a seven-game series has win one, lose one, win one, lose one, all the way to seven. Good breaking ball from Batances, who has it figured out right now. One ball, one strike. So it comes down to the mind games of how you deal with the shifts of momentum and lack of hitting, and then all of a sudden you start hitting. The carryover effect does it exist and will it exist for these teams if there's a game seven? Yeah, this flies one into center. Bregman tags Hicks. His throw to the plate. Up the line, another run. Seven to one. And that run belongs to Robertson, who did not retire a hitter. Four runs on four hits. Ball one. You can see the stuff of Patances just moves all over the place as McCann is to be happy with that RBI double and run scored back in the three run fifth, his first hit of this LCS. It scored Bregman. Made it one to nothing. It's now seven to one. The 
Astros will have decisions to make and I'm sure they'll process every bit of it for game seven if there is. Strike one on McCann. Don't know the physical ability of a McCullers being able to come back on short rest but he'll be available I would think. Out of the rotation Charlie Morton. It would be Morton's turn. It would be McCullers on short rest. That finds its way through two infielders both Gregorius and Castro and McCann has his second hit of the night for more on what could come our way if there is a game seven tomorrow let's go to Tom Verducci. Yeah Joe I spoke with pitching coach Brent Strom before the game there were three options one was Brad Peacock of course he was in the game tonight he's off the board so it's Morton on regular rest or Lance McCullers short. Now Strom told me with McCullers he has a much longer routine to prepare for a start so he really is only useful as a starting pitcher. We'll see where they go. Wow what a swing by Springer fouled straight back eighth man to bat in the inning. Springer 0 for 3 tonight with a walk. On the other side you've got Sabathia. Again you have to couch it. This game isn't over, and certainly the Yankees are capable of putting anything together with their thunderous lineup. It's a ball. But Sabathia, remember, is 10 and 0 this season following a Yankees loss. And that includes numbers and wins in the postseason. Well, as you mentioned, if there is that game, he'll be facing a much more confident offense than has been the last three, four games. Broken back, Gregorius gets Springer. Some hitters getting healthy. That guy's been healthy since spring training. Jose Altuve, another big night for the second baseman and leader for the Astros. Ninth inning rolls in. It's seven to one.
closer for the Astros gets work. It's a ball out. Ken Giles misses outside ball one. So many different things to talk about here in the top of the ninth inning, but right now we'll see what happens with Bird. Jose Altuve with the three RBI night, a two run single, and a home run. His first home run of this LCS, his fourth of the postseason. That misses up and away, and the Astros. Second of this series, the other belongs to Correa. You just don't want 25 pitches out of Giles in this inning. You don't want to extend him with a six run lead. That pops in there to make it two and one. So the ideal situation you get him work, gets three outs, all is good. Game seven, here we come. Castro will follow then Hicks the five six seven hitters for the Yankees in this inning. The five through eight batters are 0 for 10 tonight with six strikeouts. That might stay in play. One row back. Bregman couldn't get to it. Our Han Cook tire dynamic play of the game. How about Verlander. Huh. It's just fantastic. So difficult to do. He may not have been as sharp as he was in a nine inning game, but he was clutch when he had to be. First and second, nobody out. Got a little help from his defense, and it did the rest. Bird, who homered off Giles in game one, flies out against Giles here in game six. All right, so a few things have happened here. Yes, the Astros look like they're going to force a game seven. Their offense is starting to awaken, and they're saying, hey, remember us. This was the number one offense in baseball in average run production, and they looked a lot more like that here tonight. Absolutely. It's been a classic series, but game seven, the managers are going to have to make about seven to nine moves and decisions. I anticipate a lot of pitchers in tomorrow night's game just because game sevens are so hectic and so tough to manage. Giles misses ball one to Starlin Castro who is 0 for 2 hit by a pitch. It's easy to forget when the Yankees put two on and nobody out it was a three to nothing game. And Verlander was winding down and he cranked it back up for Hicks Frazier who flied almost to the wall in left center and then Headley. There were so many great moments in this game and so many twists that could have happened. You know the Astros despite that offense looking like it's starting to come out of hibernation a little bit they get an entirely different look. Tomorrow night with CC Sabathia, who's been so good, and the veteran knows how to pitch. He squared off with Kluber twice in the division series. He won game three with his team down two games to nothing. Here's one into left center. Castro is on with one out. One on, one out here in the ninth inning in a seven to one game. Let's go to Kevin with a game break. talking about and will talk about as Hicks digs his way in here. We talked to him during game three from down in the dugout. And asked him was the deal down to the last seconds like has been reported two seconds left before the deadline to get him onto this roster to make him eligible for the postseason. He said yes it was that close. He had to sign off on the deal. He didn't have to agree to come to the Houston Astros. He did. He's been the best pitcher in the game, second half. Yes, he has. And a lot of people 
from afar said he was losing it. Said he didn't have it. At the trade deadline, that's not who they needed. He has proved a lot of people wrong. He's fixed a couple things and, as you mentioned, just dominated. The Astros win this game six. Verlander will be 9 and 0. Since they picked him up from Detroit. It's interesting when I think of that stat. I think of Doyle Alexander when he went 9 and 0 for the Tigers. Some trade, some wild, no good kid. Oh, do you now? And, and who is the guy that went the other way? I don't know. He just, he was 5 and 11 in double A. His name was John Smoltz. One on, one out. Hicks trying to make it exciting again here in the ninth. Exciting for the Yankees. These fans. Plenty of excitement all night. That's ball one. AJ Hinch certainly could have given an inning to a guy like Davinsky. Try to straighten him out, but evidently not one to play around with this even in a six run ninth inning. He went with Giles. Two and two. Yeah, there's a couple ways to spin that. You give the Yankees a few more looks at Giles, although he's pitched a little differently, but mainly fastballs because of the lead. Some sliders there with. Two strikes on Hicks. But he didn't want anything to get going in this inning, and he'll deal with tomorrow. Hopefully, he has that tomorrow. That's why Giles is in the game. 2 2. Full count. Think about the advantage the Yankees have with Chapman. Extra rest pointed toward tomorrow. Canely not used here tonight. Robertson not extended. And they'll be there to back up Sabathia in what looks to be a game seven here on Saturday night. Again, Houston goes into tomorrow's game without a starter named yet. 3 2. Two on, one out. Well, Yankees are doing their part. There'll be a meeting here at the mound, and now Yankees are good. Their goal is about 13, 14 more pitches. That's their goal. And for Giles, it's seven. Or less double play something. So Brent Strom out to talk. Congratulations to Dave Roberts, one of the great guys in the game. And the Dodgers. Every phase of the game. And you know they're all watching. A deep lineup. They beat the Cubs in five games without Corey Seager, probably their best player. They had a role player last night, hit three home runs and drive in seven, and Kike Hernandez. The bullpen's become a major weapon. Look at that second line 28 and two thirds innings pitched, ERA under one. That's really been. We talk all the time about the Yankees, but the Dodgers saying, hello, our bullpen's nasty. Ball one from Giles to Frazier. Action for the Astros in their bullpen. That's Will Harris. That is Sky foul down the line. Get 
Todd Frazier in game three hit an opposite field home run. The short porch and right at Yankee Stadium. Certainly didn't crush it. He crushed the ball in that scoreless seventh. They're one of the deeper parts of the park against Verlander. It's a ball ball. As he represented the top of the run in that pitch. Barely missed. Two and one. Pretty good pitch right here. Just a little bit low. Yankee lineup. Tony, they're tough. What Verlander's done against them, so impressive. Be 20 pitches from Giles with a six run lead. Skied into left. Gonzalez to his left. Two out. Chase Headley digs in trying to extend it for the top of the lineup Headley two for three. Seats here in Orange loved every second of it. The winner, Justin Verlander, 4 0 this postseason, 2 0 in this ALCS. Luis Severino suffers the loss now 1 1 this postseason. We can't wait until tomorrow night. You want drama? Baseball is never better than a game seven, and this knockdown drag out will provide it tomorrow. It's the greatest thing in sports, and you get a chance to check it out tomorrow. Seven to one. Houston's offense woke up. This ALCS will go seven games. Kevin, guys, back to you.